I'm right there in the middle. You're right in the middle. Okay, I've lost so the attention. All right, Amy, will you talk real quick so I can test the volume? Yeah, sure. Eight. All right, hang on. Let me do louder. On the computer, yeah. yeah. So the computer's all the way up. Oh. And the speaker's all the way up. All right, do it again. Test, test. That's pretty loud. I don't think the, it sounds like the sound is coming from here. It is. The computer. Yeah. Maybe the sound could go through. You didn't hear it really loud. Let me screen here. There's the sound right there. Are you getting any? Hey, test, test. Okay, hold on. Okay. Hang on. Shout out to your laptop while you want. Hold on. Okay, try again. Try again, Amy. Yes. Hang on. Try again. Try again. Try again. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> You're really good at saying that word. Right? <laughs> it's not coming from the computer, I don't think. Yeah. Um, Who is this? Right here, what's this output volume? Built in terminal speakers. Mm -hmm. Try again. Test. There we go. All right. Still sounds like it's coming from the computer, but it's not bad. Yeah. All right, guys. This is Mother April's good friend, Amy Rainey. And she has been doing contract to close. How long have you been? Five, six years? Yeah, five years. Okay, yeah, five years. Uh, she originally um, did it for our old company, for the team. She did it at a really high level. The year that she worked for me, we did $185 million that year. Ooh. And she yeah. handled, I'm sorry, $85 million, not $185, $85 million. Yeah. Um, but anyway, she handled $85 million by herself doing contract close at a very, very high level. Um, so she's very, very knowledgeable, and so I'm super excited that she's going to get to pour into you guys today. All right, Amy, all yours. All right. Um, okay, so I'm just going to start from when your contract goes binding, once it's signed and executed. Um, and I just have a huge t uh, task list that I follow. And I know every contract the same, but yet it's different with the details, if it's cash, if it's a loan, all the things. So, But it's still a general um, task list that I follow. And so... Um, mine will be a, a little different since I'm on the back side of it. So, um, Kendall, I don't know if you're still in there, but um, the agent side, like, you'll handle a little bit more details than I will, but um, still follows the same uh, flow and time frame. So, once it um, goes binding, the first thing is I send uh, an email to the title company and if it's our buyer to the lender uh, with a copy of the contract that just says, you know, hey, we're binding, let's move forward with this. That way, title can. Uh, get moving on their uh, process of ordering title, all of the research with that, and the lender can get moving on their side of it. Um, so that's the first step, and then as soon as that's done, um, again, depending on if you're on the buyer side or the seller side, we want to uh, make sure earnest money um, gets to its designation, whether it's um, title or the buyer's agency gets there in time. Deadlines are huge. That's one of my biggest tasks is keeping my agent um, reminded of deadlines or if I'm if it's my responsibility for a specific task like if it's earnest money I'm making sure hey get your earnest money to this address by this date no later than this time um, if from the seller side I'm reaching out to the buyer's agency asking hey where's the earnest money it was due today I need a copy of it um, so just stay on top of your deadlines is huge uh, I use a, um, a platform I guess you want to call it called TC workflow it's very specific to transaction coordinators, but agents, of course, are more than welcome to use it. And it's something that on the, the front side of your contract, you go in and enter everything, the type of loan it is, the, the deadlines for everything, whether it's um, inspection contingency, uh, termite deadline. Um, you can create whatever deadlines you want. You put it in there, and you're going to get an alert on your calendar that reminds you of it. So it's excellent, especially if you have you know, two, three, four, five plus deals at one time. Um, and then every day it pops up with your task list. Like, hey, today you need to check on the inspection within that. Um, so I love TC Workflow. I think it's amazing. It does cost a fee to use it every month. Um, but anyway, so that's a little side note. Um, so once you send your uh, intro email to your title and your lender, you're going to um, make sure that inspection has been scheduled, whether that's you ordering at your buyer or the other um, agent.
agent making sure that it's scheduled, everything's good to go with that. Um, earnest money is in place on time. Make sure your compliance is set up. I know that's, for me, that's new with Water's Edge on um, mm -hmm. when it's due. Uh, I have some notes on that, but just making sure that if it's listing, that that's submitted on time, once it's binding, that that's submitted on time. And then throughout, I know sometimes you don't have all of your compliance Thanks, at the very beginning, so just making sure you have reminders and notes to go in and make sure compliance is submitted and your documents are signed. Um, if it's Fairhope Single Tax, I know that's a, a whole separate mm -hmm. thing on its own, but if it's Fairhope Single Tax, make sure you've got your transfer letter submitted on time, and then that, if you're on the buyer's side, they have their orientation scheduled in time, otherwise that can all delay closing. Um, make sure you get your document that has the processing fee. Make sure that is sent to title so that they know to put it on the um, Alta at the very end. Um, inspection, your earnest money, oh, your inspection addendum. So once you've got the inspection taken care of, then you're working on your inspection addendum to make sure that's done before the deadline um, and submit it to compliance. Once we're cleared through inspection, um, that's when we notify, if it's our buyer, we notify the lender who hey, we're ready to order the appraisal. Um, if it's if you have the seller reaching out to the buyer's side, just asking, hey, has the inspection been ordered? We need to get it scheduled as soon as possible. All of that staying on, on task so that we can close in time because that's where um, delays begin to happen. Um, if there's a survey that do, uh, making sure is it your responsibility to order it, um, or your seller needs to provide it, just whatever the details are on that to make sure survey is on your list of things to do. About halfway through the process, I'm reaching out to title to see if title work is back because sometimes that's where problems rise with that. You need to do a little bit more research and get answers to questions. I'm um, so we want a copy of title uh, as soon as possible in our compliance folder. Um, ordering termites, that's probably one of my biggest uh, working with my agent. So there's always a deadline that's in the contract. You know, it's I think um, assigned 10 business days after executed dates, but a, a lot of times I ask my agents to extend it as far as possible. So your wood infestation report is typically only good for 30 days. So if this is a 60 day closing and they want us to order termite wood infestation report 10 days after the executed, it's gonna expire before we close. Um, so that's one issue. Also, you don't want your seller or buyer paying for a termite if, if you're going to terminate because of appraisal. So it's it's playing that game of like, are we are we going to be clear through inspection? Yes. Are we going to be clear through appraisal? And then are we going to have 30 days between closing? So just timing it right. So I know that's easy just to go, yep, it's buyer's responsibility and move on to the next one. But I would double check my deadline on that one and give yourself as much time as possible because you don't want it to terminate. You know, you get through inspection, you get through appraisal, and then it terminates because of a bad um, a deadline on your termite report. Um, so that's a big one. So ordering your termite, and that is uh, finding out if there is a current bond. If so, can you transfer it? Is it worth it transferring it? Also, does the lender require a wood infestation report? So that's the two biggest things for um, termite. Um, order your home warranty. I usually wait. That's so easy to do. I usually do it online. Um, and so I usually wait the week of closing, maybe the week before closing. Again, I don't want to waste my time going through the process of ordering it if it's going to fall through due to an appraisal or a, um, an issue with the contract. Um, so those are the two things that we have to order. Um, there's not a deadline on the home warranty, it's just I don't need that, to add it to the, um, the HUD at the end. Um, two weeks before closing, I reach out to title and lender and, just, and the other agent, hey, is everything on track? Are there any issues that we're concerned about with, um, the, with the title, with the, uh, uh, the lender? Is there any issues that we're concerned about that's going to delay closing? And doing that two weeks before closing, it just gives you, hey, if there is going to be an issue, you can have a conversation with your client. Hey, we're running into this, you know, expect a delay. Or, you know, it's just two weeks is a good time frame. You're kind of halfway through everything. Um, so just touch and base with all of your uh, with all of your people. Hey, is everything on track? Do you need anything from me? Are you missing any, any documents from me? Um, make sure you send your final walkthrough form to the title company. That needs to be signed at closing. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a simple email I shoot. I have, I keep a, um, a copy of that document on my desktop. I throw it into an email and just say, hey, I do that week of closing. Basically when we're scheduling, I'll say, oh, by the way, can you please put this with the documents that need to be signed at closing? 
Um, make sure you have uh, any repair receipts that need to be sent uh, to the other agent or that you've gotten from the other agents from the inspection addendum. A lot of times there is a deadline on that. So following that deadline, you know, uh, is it three days before closing? What are the details on your inspection addendum uh, to make sure you have those receipts in hand for closing? You don't want to be surprised uh, with anything at like that. Um, confirm your compliance. Make a note to go in and double check. Are there any notes from the compliance department saying, hey, you missed a signature? Hey, we're still needing this document. Just make sure everything's good to go uh, that week or two before closing. Um, and then usually, I don't, know, I don't remember to tell you to schedule your closing. <laughs> make sure you get uh, closing scheduled. I do that a week before closing is typically a good time. If it's going to be the end of the month closing, like the 30th or 31st, I'll reach out to title a couple weeks before and just because they get booked up really fast um, at the end of the month. So I'll just say, hey, can we pencil in? Like, I know we still have a long ways to go, but can we pencil in closing for the 31st? This is what time works for my client. And a lot of times they're like, yep, no problem. If we need to change it, we can change it. Um, but make sure you get closing scheduled. Um, and then maybe two days before closing, I reach out to title for the, the settlement statement. Um, and it shows both sides, the buyer side, the seller side, how much they need to bring um, to closing. And then you're just verifying, is your commission correct? Is the termite on there, is that correct? Was it charged to the right party? So you're reviewing um, all of the details on that to make sure, even um, address, is, the, is your client's name spelled correctly? Is the right address? Just double checking everything, you don't wanna show up at the closing table and it's a huge number that's messed up or your client wasn't prepared for a number that was on there. So you go over it, send it to your client so that they can review it and if they understand that there's no surprises, they know what to send to, uh, to title. And then if they need wiring instructions, title company can send that to them. Sometimes you have to remind them, hey title, we send wiring instructions over to our buyer so they can get everything there in time. Um, once it closes, I request the, all the closing docs to be emailed to me. It's easy. A lot of times you take them home as the agent, but I'll have them email them to me. I load them into that loop, make sure they're in the closing folder for compliance and submit uh, for review. Um, and then you'll want to go change. If you're on the seller side, go change your MLS. Make sure that's changed over to sold. Uh, get your signs in your lock boxes. And yeah, that's the quick, the quick run through of it. Um, again, it's a huge checklist that um, just having your deadlines in place, making sure that you're on top of those. It's so easy to let those slip through, but um, and compliance is huge. Staying in touch with your agent, with title, lender. Um, so yeah, does anybody have any questions? No? Pretty straightforward. What did y'all what did y'all run into that has like the biggest hangups? I think mine is the termite, like Amy was saying. Um, for whatever reason, it just slips by, and then it's a scramble to get a termite inspection, and then like right before closing, and oh crap, it's got termites. Well, you don't have an out anymore. Yeah, I have a question on that right now because I have one that's under contract, and it does not have a current bond on it. So the buyer is anxious to get the WIR done. And they chose to go ahead and have it done. Like inspection and WIR are actually scheduled for the same time tomorrow. I didn't schedule them together, but that's the way they that's the way they chose to do it. Um, I mean, is that I don't know, that's just like a scenario I have right now. I mean, is ideally we would we're gonna wait until yeah. What I, yeah. Whenever I write a contract, personally, and I heard Amy say the same thing, you want to have, um, yes, the default time frame for the termite is 10 business days. I don't think that's enough. Um, so I do 10 business days for your home inspection and 15 for the termite, <clears throat> just for that purpose. It's like you get through the home inspection contingency, and then that is my like kick off to, hey, we need to order the termite now. And that's what uh, I, uh, I just don't want them to spend money on a termite inspection right. if we're not even going to come past from the inspection. Exactly. Yeah. Because then, and they only last 30 days, so you just spent a hundred bucks for no reason <laughs> right. if, if we're going to terminate because we can't come to terms because of the, you know, anything, the poly plumbing or the blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. 
I um, encourage them not to do it yet. Until but, they, but, but they rather. Right, but when we get past that home inspection uh-huh. contingency, that's my reminder to myself to order the termite. It's like, it will be the same yeah. conversation. Hey, we just came to terms on the home inspection. Yes, they agreed to do X, Y, Z. Now we need to order the termite inspection. But that's also why I give it that extra five business days. That's mm-hmm. an extra week. Right. Um, <clears throat> just to protect your clients. Um, what else? For me, the home warranty is always something. Like... That gets lost in the shuffle, I feel like, you know, mm-hmm. focus on, you know, who you, you negotiate either way, you know, in, in the, the contract to see, yeah. you know, which side might pay for it. But I feel like it's hard for me to follow up on that if I'm handling, you know, if I'm doing the contract to close phase myself. And a lot of times I've had to get it in the day before closing because I didn't have a remind, you know, like I wasn't right as... I lean on my title company pretty hard because they will tell me, hey, we need this. Mm -hmm. Um, So long as it's a good title company. Because there are some, like Fair Title, completely missed it. It's like, how did you balance a CD without all the stuff? Mm. You know? But it's not really their job. I know it's my job. But at the same time, if you have a good title company that you can lean on, like Anchor, they remind remind Mm -hmm. you... They go through the contract, and um, so I think there's a lot to say about a good title company. It's, it doesn't replace a contract to close, but I think if, if they know what they're doing, you can lean on them more than you probably should. At least that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. And it, like Amy was saying, that's really quick. You know, on their online portal, it's... Less than five minutes to yeah. get your home inspection or home warranty. Yeah. yeah, you could do it the morning of if you. I mean, obviously that's not great because oh. of the uh, the HUD that they need to get it on there, but it's still fast to do. So, what is your experiences with transferring home warranties? Because that is always a pain. Um. Well, I just make a phone call. So a lot of mine are with Old Republic, and yeah. so um, I'll go in thinking, oh, I'm just gonna order one, and it's like, oh, this one already has a, a warranty. Call this number. I call them. And explain to them, hey, I'm transaction coordinator, we're closing on this date, looks like there's already a warranty, and they're like, yeah, we can transfer, and they give you all the details. If it sounds like an issue, um, you know, get with your client, get with the agent, talk to it, then they say, you know what, just scratch it, it's not worth it, let's just get a brand new one. But it's usually a phone call is what solves that. But they let you do it beforehand? Because I've had it where, where Old Republic told me to call back after it was closed. Oh. Um, I don't know that I've, I mean, it's actually... For five years, I've closed a lot of deals. I, I'm sure I've had that, um, and I usually just either put that back on the agent or the um, the buyer and say to, to call back. But again, just weighing out is it even worth it? Like, is the cost and and the amount of coverage length of time? Is it you know are they saying oh we've only got three months that we're transferring and it's going to cost a fee? Is it worth it versus just saying you know what scratch all of that we're just going to order a new one and advising your client to to just do a new one. But it's all in the details of what, what they tell you. Yeah. Um, even sometimes with termite companies, um, some you have really easy that are just great to work with and it's no problem, we'll transfer it. And then you have others that are just an absolute nightmare to work with and they say, no, you know, fill this out and then have the, the buyer call us after closing and then we'll transfer it. And you're just hoping, like, well, okay, I hope that you're actually telling me the truth and you're not just a newbie that doesn't know what you're talking about, you know, and so... Um, yeah. Termite companies are very similar, and that's just, again, weighing it out and going, you know what, maybe we should just get a brand new one with a whole new company. Um, yeah, yeah I have all of the details. Because in the contract, if it says that the buyer, or excuse me, the seller is paying, and they already have one, then it, it says they can either pay or transfer. So if it's at the seller's expense, it would just be a transfer, because it doesn't cost them anything, it's already covered. Right. But, um... No, we had, I had one, it was actually Cooks, and the seller agent worked really, really hard on their end to get it transferred. Um, the bond had been in place since 1974, um, so it was a super, super old bond, and um, they told them, abs- they told them no. They told them that they were not transferring it. My people actually went and got a bond quoted with their company that they're used to, and then title ended up the day of closing. Cook sent them over the transfer paperwork. 
Right. So at the closing table, they had two. Two. So I was the phone canceling the new one. Uh, well, it's probably a really good deal from 1974. If they had them something on the end. Yeah. So we were like, we all were shocked that it was Tracy. So Anchor was shocked. Like, because uh, the listing agent was shocked. We're like, you're kidding me. Like, we've been begging for this for weeks. And then it just showed up. <laughs> Obviously, everybody knows Terminex will not transfer, yeah. so if they've got a ter Terminex, it's not even an option, and it's probably for the best to get a new company. <laughs> um, truly, truly, it's terrible. Um, what else? It's just nice to hear, like, how other, you know, I, I like, I learn from experiences from everyone else, the way everybody else does it, so. I will say, I know we haven't like gone through a full deal together, because I had one that terminated in April. Your welcome email and all of that, I was like, save. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years of, uh, years of working with tons of different transaction coordinators and agents, and then I, so because I'm a transaction coordinator with another company, I have agents in Texas, the uh, Dallas Metro, in Alabama, and then also here in Colorado, my husband's an agent. So doing different states and counties, and um, it's interesting to see the different requirements. So I've had to learn how to um, type up. And that this TC workflow that I use, you can create uh, your emails, and so to where it's already pre-typed. Like, it's a lot of setup. If you decided to use that for yourself, it's a lot of setup, but it's worth it, and it saves so much time. I clicked the email icon, and my pre-typed pre email is in there, and I uh, my signature is on it. I throw my attachment and it's sent. Like, it just saves so much time and energy with those emails. Because it's the same email that I'm sending every contract, every deal. It's the same email. And so it's nice to have a pre-typed one to just throw out there. And I don't have to think about it. And so it's worth it to have this program, in my opinion. Or to have a transaction coordinator. <laughs> One of the That's right. It was funny. The April was one. saying a couple weeks ago, I guess you were out of the country maybe, or you were yeah. remote and she was like, I just got an update from Amy on something with the contract. She, and, but she realized that it's because those automated reminders, I guess, yeah. that you that yeah. send out the email. Yeah, automated so, reminders. And then I every like week that. I send a week. It's automated. It's uh, every time. So I have these tasks that I check off. Mm -hmm. And every Monday at 2 p.m. I have an automatic email that goes out to my agents with this checklist that shows what's been done, what's still left to be done. Uh -huh. And so it just keeps you up to date as an agent of like, wow, that's already been done, I need to think about it. Um, yeah. And so it's, it's a nice update for the agent. And that's all through TC Workflow. So it's amazing. I love that system a lot. It saves me as a transaction for it. I'll have 20 deals open at one time. And so Ooh. to keep them all straight, I need something like that. Oh, so, yeah. To stay focused. Um, I need that. So something that's new with Water's Edge is the compliance on the front end. So you have three business days mm -hmm. to get all your stuff in before you get fined. Um, so that's your net sheets yeah, for everything. So if you get a new listing, you got to get your listing agreement signed, your net sheet signed, recad. recad. If it's lead-based paint, you have to have lead-based paint. If it's you know before 1978. Um, all within the three days and submitted for compliance. When you get a new pending, the same, everything <clears throat> that I just said, we had net sheets, web based paying with applicable binding contract, um, which really it's a good thing because then you're not scrambling at the last minute, as that's all what I always did, is just scramble at the last minute. Um, but it helps everybody know that everything is done. Um, something that I've been running into a lot is wired earnest money because then we have to supply proof that it has been sent are y'all running into that at all yes yes um, um i actually and you know, have you ever heard of earnest like e e a r n n e s t yeah okay um yeah, I was having difficulty with the wiring, and then I had a, comp a title company awesome. in Mobile that um, said, no, this is the way we're doing everything. And it's a app email or web app website, and you go in, as the buyer agent, you select the title company, you select the um, 
the property address, you input the buyer, you can copy the listing agent, all of that, and then say Matt's my buyer, I hit request and it texts Matt and it sends him an email saying earnest money is requested, then you go through the app and it sends it to title. Sounds fantastic, right? But okay. my first person to use it right. was an older guy and he's like having trouble and had to have it manually mm. done and now I'm waiting on confirmation from title to let me know it's there. Right. Yesterday it was pending and I'm like, okay, go on. But yeah, like what are we in the new compliance? Like what is the best way? Because this is my first time dealing with the first ones was a law firm and I just they just wrote a check, I went and dropped it off. But like what are we all yeah. what are y'all doing for earnest right now? Well, I just did one that was basically it was three thousand and what was it cashier's check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That way, it's certified, and it goes. Of course, we're going, you know, putting it straight to the title company. So, for me, I, be, I like to be involved in that. If it's that case, if it's a physical check and not just like a a, a transfer, or whatever, I make sure I kind of I hand delivered it to the title company. Basically, I don't. I just feel like. I don't know, especially with last year, some things happened with earnest money that were people, buyers never sent it in, or they did a stop payment or something. Yeah. So there's a lot of different scenarios, I feel like, with earnest money that's not, that you just kind of used to take for granted, maybe, Yeah. of how that system's done, or the process. I agree. I got burnt bad. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I will let y'all know about this new system because if it actually works. Yeah, like, we need to test and it. And I did like, we go through and I looked at the, some of the title companies that were like in the drop down and it had a lot of the ones that we use. Um, so it's kind of like just like having a bank app, but it 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 feeds like the buyer can send the earnest money to title company through the app. Yeah, like, I know. Or, you, I know, Amy. You can't see, but like this is because I just pulled it up to see if mine's out of pending yet. So, like, this is my file, and it tells me, like, exactly who's in it. Double uh -huh. self title, hungry lot, I'm the requester, here's the payer, here's the money. And then it gives, also gives me, and I just got this email to myself. Once it's been uh, started the process, if there's a proof of intent. So, I guess if you're, if the seller agent is like, you know, it hasn't gone through yet, but I have something saying it's processing. Huh. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. It's um, been initiated, I guess. Yeah. The, the payment or the transfer and of funds. And they said it's typically instantaneous, but because the company had to manually do it because his credit union was, his credit union was blocking it. Um, and so they had to manually do it. That makes sense. Okay. And so it, they said it would take until today to like actually process. And it's due today, so I'm like, come on. <laughs> well, as yeah. long as you can show that. Yeah. Other oh, he's been proof. working on it since so. 30 seconds after you got the email, but. He's just a little special. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've just been having my clients drop off. I've been fighting extra hard for my title company of preference, yeah. Anchor. Um, and then I'll have them drop it off at Anchor. Yeah. And then, so I don't have to drop it to Daphne. What's, we don't have to get together. What's Anchor accepting? Because I've had Everything. I've had two title companies tell me no checks. They took a check yesterday. They took a wire today. So I, I've taken everything. Okay. Um, and then I asked them to just email me a picture of the check yes. for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. to me, that's a win just that's because I'm not involved. And then they're handling it for me and just come, literally comes to my inbox. Yeah. Um, I know that it kind of puts it on your client, mm -hmm. which depending on the client, I would be willing to do or not to do. Um, or if it's a title company that I don't have relationships with, then I will take the check and give it to them, but then I can take a picture of it. And Yeah. Um, what and if they're else? out of town, then mm -hmm. the whole mailing thing that's too, and that's like, why you're using that app. So that, yeah. That, yeah. I don't know. Just... So that's where I got burnt, Amy. So somebody had mailed a check um, so I, he took a picture of it before he put it in the mail, but obviously the mail takes some time, but I'd already submitted the picture of the check that he texted me before he dropped it in the mail. And then, um, before we, we had actually deposited it, but it had not cleared. 
and he put a stop payment on the check before it cleared. Wow. So then the... Why would he do that? Because he knew, he knew what he was doing. It was completely malicious. Gotcha. He, he wow. knew he was terminating and he didn't, wow. and it was a significant amount of money and he didn't want to lose it. He didn't want to have any, wow. any, any chance of losing his earnest money. So he just put a stop payment on it. Just take it into your own hands, you know? Yeah. So mm. really bad. I ended up having to pay for it out of you my, did. my pocket. Yes. Wow. Better than going to court. Wow. So. And was that, that was your, your buyer? My buyer. It was a mess. The whole thing was a mess, but. Yeah. It wow. ended up closing. Well. So. It did end up closing? Yeah. Not with that client, but I ended up selling the house. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. Wow. What else you got, guys? I'm just... Nothing? Well, okay, so I know, like, and I do, like, the little welcome letter, too, when I have the listing, sending the contract and other information for all the, all the information, you know, to do that welcome email to the title company, but if I have the buyer, I know we send it to the lender, but when do you start your or your introduction to the con that part of the contract to close representing a buyer, I guess? If, oh, or I guess maybe, let, let me rephrase, like if I, if, I guess maybe once the, I would send your email or your information, contact information to the listing agent and put y'all yeah. together. So, uh, or, when I'm on, so as a transaction coordinator, when something goes under contract, April goes and fills out that closing checklist okay. in Dot Loop. Do you guys, does everyone use that or no? I use it, but I mean, they have access to it, whether they use it or not. Okay. Uh, you should, so you, it's such no, a, like, no, that no. you want to talk to, and I have a binder. I print it out, like, I just yeah, go I use digital, it. but I print those closing checklists, and I keep it in my binder, and I scribble notes all over it. Like if there is a change in the price, I scratch it out and I write it. It's just a quick glance. If April calls me and she's like, hey, do you remember what happened with blah, blah, blah? I've got, I can flip to that piece of paper, look yeah. at my notes that I've scribbled on it. But anyways, I print that. As soon as she gives it to me, I print it. And then I immediately, unless I'm like tied up with something, I immediately send an email to, if we're on the buyer side, um, mm -hmm. She has all the contact information, so she she's given me the listing agent's information. Okay. The title company, typically, if not, I'll reach out to the seller's agent and say, "Hey, what title company are we using?" Um, and then I send an email to the seller's agent, title company, and their lender if I've gotten their information. I know it's no, it's our lender. Sorry, um, to our lender, and I send it out as one big email. Hey, everyone, I'm April's transaction coordinator. Please keep me in the loop. Let's get this thing closed. Um, and so I, I immediately send off, I do a lot of things on the front end, um, mm -hmm. set my dates, um, April gets a, a notification on her calendar of deadlines, um, I check and see if the inspection's been scheduled, so I, there's a ton of things I knock off day one, right. and then I can just kind of, not sit around, but sit around and wait till the inspection's done, and we have an, uh, an addendum on it, um, but that first day, if I can just get myself organized, wrap myself around everything that that looks like, if it's a cash closing and they want to close in two weeks, that I'm touching base with title saying, hey, they want to close this really quick, is this even possible, put it on your radar. So right. just day one and day two is jumping on top of everything you can jump on so that we don't get you know, three weeks in it and have a major delay. Right. Does that okay. answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Closing checklist. <laughs> yeah, I use it all the time. This is it's easy to remember. I can even pull it up in dot loop and like the client earlier was like, Hey, where are we closing? Hold on, let me look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's in my closing checklist. Especially when you have multiple deals, yeah. because like, yeah. I don't remember. I, I mean, even if I only one. have one, it's still like <laughs> Oh wait, wait, what? But I mean um, I'm gonna break that's your excuse. I'm gonna blame that's that's your excuse for now. I went the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm still gonna blame it on that. You, you, you can. It's, it's post pregnancy brain. <laughs> baby brain. Baby brain. Kid brain. 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 Did y'all see that? Anyway. 
I can't remember who that is. The rapper. What's next, Amy? Have you gone over everything? Yeah, I went through it really fast. It was a, a fast run through of um, my task list that I follow. Okay. Do y'all have any questions? Cool. All right, sweet friend. Awesome. Thanks for having me. We appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, no problem. Bye. Bye.